Welcome back everyone. In the previous video we learned about how to create the components. We had the uh, REST API custom endpoint created where we've got all of the post data, page number, uh, found post, etc. In this video we're going to fetch all of this data from the REST API of our WordPress uh, posts and put that on the front end. So show that on the front end uh, in React. Okay, so let's begin then. Well, for the pagination, there would be a few things that we'll need. Uh, but to begin with, what we can do is get the page ID first. Okay, so what we can do is instead of just putting like this, because we might get a uh, string as well, and you want to make sure that we get integer for the page ID. Uh, because if you want to add or subscribe the page number, depending on if the user hits the next page or the previous page, then it'll be better that way. So Let's do this. Let's say page ID is equal to props dot page ID. But we're going to use parse int, which is a JavaScript function to make it an integer just in case if it's a string. Now we're going to use React hooks uh, to create to manage our state for this functional component. So we're going to need use state and we're also going to need use effect. Okay. Uh, if you don't know what these are, uh, I've got a, a series for React hooks completely where I discuss about what these are and how the functional components behave, what are states, what are effects, um, you know, all of that information from the basics. Okay, so you can watch that if you aren't, don't know. But if you still don't know, it's completely fine. I'll just give you some basics. Okay, so how you define state in a functional component with hooks is that you just create an array, okay, and you put the value of the, you create a variable basically so let's say i want to create current page and then you put the name of the function that will change its value later on so set current page so we'll call this function to change the current page value and then you need to also define an initial state for it so you use use state to define it and then you put the initial state so initial state will always be the page id or whatever we passing from its parent Okay, <clears throat> we're also going to need total pages. So I'm just going to create a few more uh, total pages and function to change its value will be set total pages. <clears throat> and it's going to be use state and initial value will be false. So this is going to handle the, uh, yep, just Sorry, not false, but uh, one. Okay. And then we also need to handle the loading. So till the time the data is not available, we can show a loader. Okay, so you state. Uh, initially, loading can be false. Okay, then we're going to need to deal with error messages in case if we get any errors, we don't get the data from the backend when we hit the REST API endpoint. And I'll just create set error and use state. I'm just empty for now. Okay, initial state for the error message will be empty initially. Okay, const. Then we have posts set posts so once we have the response available from the request we can set this data initially let's set it to null okay so you got all of these things we got all of this that we need the next thing we're going to do is basically <clears throat> uh, use the use effect method so if you already know about use effect method this method will be called um, you know initially on the initial vendor and then every time the state changes for a given value so if we define an empty array over here as a second parameter so first parameter is of course the function second parameter is the uh, the inputs so if i put this as an empty array which means that every time this component is loaded um, rendered uh, you know this won't be called which means this would be called only once at the time of initial rendered and not on subsequent renders however if i pass a value over here uh, let's say I want this method to be called every time the current page changes Then all I have to do is just pass this here. Okay, so 
it's very important guys to handle this carefully because otherwise you may end up into infinite loops uh, more details are explained again in my tutorial uh, that you can check out on react hooks okay uh, and by, by, by the way you can go to coditech.com and, and check out the courses that I have available that will give you a good glance of what you can learn okay awesome coming back so this would mean that use effect method will be called on the initial render which means when, once the component is uh, you know comes to the DOM uh, sorry once the component is rendered the first time and also on subsequent render every time the value of the current page changes if this doesn't change this won't be called okay awesome now this is the place where we want to um, you know hit the rest api and we're going to install the xus for that we've already installed it but if you haven't already you can install it so i'm just going to import xus to fetch the data you can use fetch as well but the xus just make things simpler for you <clears throat> okay and in terms you're going to need the wordpress uh, site url for this so we've already got the data available somewhere here into our client config which is here so we've defined a site url over here so that uh, later on if you want to change it we can just change it one place place and it gets changed automatically everywhere else where it's being used so all i have to do is say WordPress site URL is equal to client config dot site URL. So it's already imported that on top from that file. That's fine. So this will be our WordPress site URL. For example, your uh, WordPress site URL name is example.com, so it'll be that. Okay, then we're going to use xus.get and it's going to need the site URL which is this. And then slash. So remember when we created the endpoint, I'm just going to show that to you real quick. So if you go to my GitHub and make sure you follow me over here to support my work. Go to repositories, REST API endpoints. Inside of the API's directory, we have created an endpoint in the previous videos. And if you check, this is your WordPress site URL example.com. That's what we put. And then you need to put all of this. So let's do that. Now page number is going to be dynamic. So remember we already have the current page. And initially we are setting to whatever has been passed with the help of props so we just need to pass that again we're going to use dollar sign okay brilliant <clears throat> so this is going to fetch these two values dynamically okay and then so we put the promise so when we get the response then this function is called so initially we need to set the loading to true so that we show the loader and then once we've got the response we set the loading to false Oops. okay so after you've got the response we set the loading to false now if we've got the status as 200 so remember when we created the rest api uh, we passed the status to 200 right if we got all of the data that we need and then we say rest.data.status so if that's so then we're going to set posts so we call this function when we call this function uh, set posts is going to set the value of the post okay so it's the state will be changed for this particular uh, object okay so we'll say set post will be equal to so inside of the rest.data <coughs> this will be available in post data so remember when we passed it we passed it in the post data so just want to show that to you if i do a console over here 
and I say response and I say rest.data see what we get refresh when the component gets launched if you check network you can see that this is the endpoint that's been called uh, yeah why page 3 is because we pass page 3 on top okay so let's let's just go to blog for now we'll worry about the page later so you can see page number one because that's what we passed right so if you remember let me remind you in blocks we are passing one to post because that's the page that we want to show initially right so it comes back to post we grab that data from the uh, from the, from the page props which is page id uh, when the component gets rendered the first time use effect is called we fetch the data from that url we pass the current page id as one and that's what's been hit and in the response we get all of this data which is status 200 post data uh, we get the found post we get the page count and that's exactly what we had asked for right this is what we're sending from our custom endpoint right awesome so inside of the rest.data we have got the post data okay so that's what we're doing rest.data dot post data so we're setting our post okay and the next thing we want to set is the total number of pages so we have the page count set total pages rest.data dot page count okay so this is going to give us uh, how many pages are available basis of this page number we can create our pagination so if there are nine pages then it will be one two three four and so on up to nine right you may not necessarily uh, you know show all the page numbers to the user because sometimes you know, if you may have 200 pages you may not want to show that you, you might just show like dot 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 in between uh, you must have seen that in, in the 2019 theme but we'll get to that okay however if there is an error then just set an error so error dot response dot data dot message so some people ask me how do you know this is how you get error dot response dot data well if you check the axios documentation that's how you get the error data okay so error.data.message, we're going to set that into that. So basically, we are doing all of the work when we have the response. Okay, and then also we're going to catch if we get any errors. So if there's an error, then we're going to do set error, error.response, response.data.message. Same thing, basically. Why not just copy it? Okay, so whatever error we get, we just feed that to our error object. Okay, awesome. So you've got all of this. Great. Now let's just console that we, if the state is actually getting set. So if we check posts, in fact, let's just put all of this. So I'll have loading, I'll have posts. I'll have total pages. I think these three are good for now. Okay, so let's see. So remember initially we had set the loading to false. So we set that to true the first time the request is made. Right, it goes to true. And then once we get the response, we set that to false. So now you can see it's false and now we've got the response. Great, so we've got all, all that we need. So what we want to do is basically show a loader in case if we haven't got the post yet in case if the data is being fetched okay so what we want to do is come over here and say react dot fragment and if loading is true then show a post loader so we need to create a component come on and layout is 
say post loader dot js and we'll just say import react from react and let's just do export const or just say const loado for now let's we'll just put loading export default loader awesome let's close it and let's just import that so loader oops not this loader a new one you might ask me that if there's a loader already available, why are you using that? Well, the reason for this is because sometimes in Facebook, you must have seen that they show you some kind of you know animation type loader uh, where it feels like the post is just coming. Okay, so that's why we're creating custom one. So post loader, why isn't it important? Export it, oh, okay. I didn't put the correct name, post loader. Hope it could, yeah, there you go. Okay. Let's check. You expect to see loading, but post loader is not defined. Okay, we have not imported it, it seems. Okay, got it. Import post loader from post loader. Awesome. There you see. You can see it was loading and then it went off which means that loading was completed and we've got the data so all we have to do is just display that data so in the next video we're going to just go ahead and loop through that post that we're already getting and just show all of the data that the user can see and then we will sh jump on to pagination okay so i'll see you then if you did like my video please give a thumbs up if you aren't subscribed to my channel already please do subscribe to support my work you can follow me on github as well as Twitter. My Twitter handle is Imran Sayer. And for more courses, you can check out kodi.tech.com where you can learn about uh, different uh, topics. I'll see you in the next. Thank you. Bye-bye.